In this example, I'm going to show you how to improve the performance of an application by using operation queues. We'll start off with an app I've already prepared, and we'll adapt it to make it work better. You'll find the code for the project in the project files in a folder called Feedstream Begin. OK, let's open up the project and let's see what we have here. If you look in the root view controller, you'll see we have in the view did load, we are creating an NSURL. We're using then the Twitter API link for the public timeline, or rather you will be. I, for the purposes of this demonstration, are using my own tweets only so that we don't actually uh, show any potentially private information. We are then retrieving JSON data from that URL. We are then deserializing it. In this case, I'm using the TwitchJSON third-party library. And we are then causing our table view to reload. And our table view is reloading because it's using the tweets array as a data source for the cells. Now, you may expect this to be all perfectly fine and normal, but potentially we could be performing a quite expensive network operation here that could take quite a long time. And if we now run this, we see a black screen for quite a while. Now we see the tweets. That black screen could have been there for a lot, lot longer. If this was an expensive operation, which unfortunately my public Twitter timeline isn't, then that could have taken quite a while, but the user is just looking at a black screen before the data's loaded. And that's the important point. The application hasn't started. The user doesn't know what's happening. If we do have a five or 10 second retrieval of data across the internet, the user doesn't know what's happening. They'll think the application's broken and they won't be happy. So let's fix that. We're going to change this application and we're going to start using operation queues and we're going to move all of that data retrieval out into an operation queue using a custom operation. So let's first, in the app delegate, define our operation queue and a property for it. And over to the implementation file, we're going to synthesize it. Now you've probably noticed that I'm not using ARC in this project. I'm not using ARC for the simple reason that the third-party JSON library I'm using hasn't been converted. I could use ARC in my own code and set the compiler flags to allow the two approaches to coexist, but I'm not going to do that for the sake of this example, although on a more complex project, I no doubt would. So now in the did finish launching with options, we're just going to initialize our operation queue, and that's all we need to do to set up the operation queue and get it running. Now, we mustn't forget then in this case, because we're not using ARC, to go and do our dialog of the operation queue. Okay, so let's create our operation queue. We're going to go along and we're going to create a new class. An Objective C class will do nicely. Leave it at NS object for now. And we'll call it load public timeline operation. And we can put it in the classes file. That looks good. And there we have, we have our header file and we have our implementation file. Okay, let's go to the header file and let's just paste in a nice chunk of code. Now then, what we've done here is we defined a protocol for a load public timeline operation delegate, which has a required function of public timeline did load. And then we've defined our load public timeline operation itself, which has, as its interface, it has its delegate, which means we can actually build a view controller that will use this operation and we can retrieve in the delegate function, assuming we implement the delegate protocol, we can retrieve using public timeline did load 
the tweets that are going to be returned by the operation. Okay, let's go over to our implementation file. Once again, I'm going to paste in some code. Now then, what we have here is within the implementation of our operation, we have our main method, which is required. We have our public timeline did load implementation. And we are calling in that basically, as long as this operation hasn't been cancelled, we're saying self.delegate public timeline did load tweets. Now we've got the code up to here is exactly the same code that was lifted out of our main view controller. We've lifted it out, we'll go back and delete it in a moment because we're going to put it into the operation. But it's basically copied and pasted straight out of there. The only difference then really is that we have this line here which says, self, the operation, perform selector on main thread, selector, public timeline did load, which is this selector, with object tweets, and wait until done yes. So the operation, when it runs within the operation queue, it will go and retrieve the data, it'll populate the tweets array, and then as soon as it's finished, it's going to then go and execute this selector, passing the tweets across. The selector is going to cause the delegate to operate the selector, passing it the tweets. And this is how we get data back out of an operation into our original calling view controller. Okay, let's go back there and take a look at what we have to do in the view controller to start using this operation. Okay, we'll go back to our root view controller, to the header file, and we'll import our operation, and we'll make sure we are implementing the load public timeline operation delegate protocol which means we can act as a delegate, which we will need to be able to retrieve those tweets. Now, if we go to our view controller implementation file, now remember that we had to define our operation queue in our application delegate. So to be able to access the queue, we'll need to be able to access the delegate. So let's just import our delegate header. And we're now going to go and use our operation queue so we can remove all of this. So all we've got now is show the network activity indicator and hide it. And we can add in the code we need for our operation. So we're going to say, create me a new load public timeline operation. Make me its delegate. Find me the operation queue from my app delegate. And then Add the operation, low public timeline operation, to that queue. And then we're just doing a release to tidy things up. Basically, what that's going to do is that's going to add our processing to retrieve our data into the operation queue, and it's going to run. When it completes, it's going to trigger its method, which calls the delegate method in our delegate to load the tweets. So we're going to have to add our delegate method. So if we implement now our public timeline did load delegate method, we can retrieve the tweets into our tweets array and we can reload the table data. Okay, so let's run that now. There's the table view straight away. I can react with it and there are the tweets. A much nicer, smoother, experience for our users. No black screen hanging there for a long time. We see the application, the application loads straight away just like that. And then we go off and we retrieve the data. And as soon as the data's back, we present it. So again, the amount of data we were retrieving here wasn't too bad, but this could easily have been a real mess without using an operation to get the app loaded. The app was loaded, data was being retrieved in the background, and if you try this example with some other feed queries that take longer, you'll see that there's a complete difference to what we saw before. There's no black screen hanging around. There's no confusion for the users. The app loads, the data's going to load, and then the data's going to appear once it's been loaded. Moving network activity like this into an operation queue helps to free up the UE and allows us to show the user some feedback, 
and to improve the perceived responsiveness of our applications. Now remember that perceived responsiveness is the key. So identify pieces of your application's functionality that can benefit from this approach and avoid those bad, it seemed to crash before it even loaded, app store reviews.